hospital. And we got her uh, to make commitments uh, when she was a candidate for mayor. And then we got her to live up to her commitments, but it, it took a long time. It was slow. Finally, 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 16th Street is finally getting a dedicated bus lane. Um, and it took a long time, uh, a, lots of persistence. Um, I call it polite persistence uh, and, it, and it pays off, but it's a lot of hard work. Um, and you need to not only get uh, the commitments, but you need to get them to follow up. Cheryl, uh, do I have a few more minutes or, uh, yes? Okay, because I really do wanna hear from all of you uh, at the community level as well. Um, my, my, my motto had been that polite persistence pays off. I had seen it work uh, at the micro level um, with little things like, uh, um, like um, the 15th Street bike lane and, um, um, and getting more buses. Uh, but those little early successes showed that that model could be, could be successful uh, with partnerships like Coalition for Smart Growth uh, to help. Um, but our model was get the government representatives on the record. So get them to a meeting. Uh, these, as Stuart was mentioning, the government reps like Megan Kanegi at, at DDOT and uh, uh, Springworth before her and so many others, Sam Zimbabwe, who you may remember, they all, they all care. They all want to uh, make our city better, but they have so many uh, priorities, so many pressures, some of them uh, policy, some of them budget, some of them political. And uh, I always tried to keep that in mind, but you can't let up. And I think the, the, the fair-minded government uh, 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 workers who share, our, share the goals, they appreciate uh, community advocacy and activism as long as it is, as long as it is good natured and polite. And you can try to be uh, less polite uh, sometimes, but if you get mean spirited, you might not, you know, you might not, you might tr close off those avenues of, uh, of, of, of cooperation with the agencies. So what we did instead <laughs> was persistence. Uh, and that, in, that took the form of, uh, I put a sticky note on my computer Every Monday, I would send an email, just every Monday, a polite but firm and persistent email. Uh, and you CC everyone. You CC the council. You CC the advocates. You CC the mayor. Uh, and, uh, and you just don't let up. And emails aren't enough. Uh, if you can get uh, phone numbers, ideally cell phone numbers, you can follow up with uh, a voicemail uh, because they, they might not pick up the phone. But then you tell them, I left you a voicemail. You, you have their cell phone number. You send them a text. Hey, just following up. It's a, it's, it's, it's a lot of work, but it, it does pay off. And you get them to the public meetings, you get uh, press coverage, uh, and you get commitments in writing or in the press. And then they have to live up to it uh, sooner or later. It's not easy to get them to follow, to get that, that follow up, but um, you, then you, that you, you do have to just, <laughs> unfortunately, keep sending those emails. Now those partnerships are invaluable, whether it is uh, transit advocates or smart growth advocates or environmental advocates, anyone who might have an, a shared interest, you wanna try to bring them along. And um, I, I don't have to tell you all, but uh, in, in this day and age, advocacy does have a, uh, a, a more advantages than they used to in the form of social media. Um, we have limited time and resources, but social media is free. It's not easy, but it is, it is free. It doesn't take that much time. So if you start to um, have connections with advocates who share your views, you got to tag them in your tweets. You got to use the hashtags, although hashtags are overrated. Um, but what, what works for me is tagging my allies, uh, my, uh, my partners in tweets, get it to their attention, get them to retweet it, uh, and then get the press involved as well. Um, uh, in my experience, press coverage uh, was sometimes just as valuable as a council member's vote uh, or um, because you, you get them, you get it on the record, you get the, you get the public attention on it. And that's how you bring the leaders around um, in a lot of situations when things are too slow. 
I used to have a saying, uh, especially on in this in this endeavor, it was uh, we had Metro on our side. Metro, in fact, a lot of you know laymen residents they would think that. Metro is the problem. In fact, Metro wasn't the problem. They wanted their buses to go faster, uh, to not get clogged in traffic. They wanted their drivers to be able to, they wanted more fares. Uh, they wanted more riders. Uh, and uh, so Metro wasn't the issue. It was it was really DDOT and the making the uh, making these bus priority lanes on the streets. It's a balancing act to be sure. Um, yeah. You, you, you had concerns about parking and traffic and they had to be engineered and all that stuff takes time. But I used to good natured the rib that a, the agency, I would say they have, as you may have heard, an overall plan for DC called Move DC. And I would say my plan is actually move DDOT. We needed to get DDOT to move and it needed, uh, it needed a, a lot of time and effort uh, and partnerships to do it. And it couldn't have been done without the Coalition for Smart, Smarter Growth, couldn't have been done without Cheryl and her colleagues. So I wanna thank you so much uh, for your help uh, and for this award. Uh, we did it. Thank you. Thank you, great job. And you know, one thing you didn't mention that I actually think is super important is all the, the time you put in on getting ANC resolutions up and down the corridor. That's, right. that's a really, that's a hard thing to do. It takes a lot of, evening meetings um, and in addition, like petitions are really important too, but like going in and getting all those, you you did such a great job with that. Totally valuable work. So with that, um, you know, we uh, I, I, we can just sort of like have a, a, a just, uh, you can just voice um, a question or, or a comment. Um, and also I don't think I saw uh, Megan Kanegi, but I just wanted to see if she is here. She signed up, but I don't know if, she, I don't think I saw her come in. Megan, because and so I'll just say who she is. She is the DDOT person in charge of the the quite new bus priority program that is taking I think sort of the beachhead of 16th Street, which took forever and has been lapped by the H and I bus lanes, um, and uh, then there was a pop up um, project for bus lanes in uh, in on 14th Street in Columbia Heights, and and so now we actually have sort of more of a, uh, you know, the infrastructure of, of a program that's there to really prioritize moving our buses around the city. So that's a great outcome. I have a question. Um, I'm a little farther west uh, in the Adams Morgan area. I don't need the 16th Street uh, right now uh, bus, but I'm just wondering about how the timetable now for an actually dedicated bus lane, I don't think it's there yet, right? Is that right? Or maybe I'm wrong. Um, and also uh, the, I guess the timetables. And I'm actually wondering about plans for Connecticut Avenue. Um, and is there going to be an attempt to try to do a bus lane there? Um, Cause I know they're trying to re-envision Connecticut Avenue which has become a major throughway. Well, 16th street is fortunately un uh, under construction. It's just begun. It it's just taken forever, uh, as you saw, but uh, but we're finally there. Uh, they just began the construction. When, when should it be finished, Cheryl? Uh, this uh, summer, maybe? Uh, you know, actually, I'm, I'm not sure of the timeline. Yeah, summer or fall. Megan, it's under construction now. It just, Megan, it's just starting. Yeah, Megan would know. It's gonna be uh, many miles. Uh, and uh, a big step forward, but we, but you're right. Um, we need more of them. Maybe Georgia Avenue. People are hoping for 14th Street, which is a, uh, not a residential street like 16th. Uh, it's more of a commercial street. Um, but Connecticut Avenue, I'm following very closely. We're here, come. Let's change your idea. Yeah, okay, I bet you. Uh, Connecticut Avenue uh, and uh, bike lanes. It's 30. Up. Okay, let's go change. Should be. <laughs> Actually, why don't you take off the, the presentation so that we can see people full screen? And somebody's uh, talking okay. to somebody else off screen and you can yep, mute yep, if yep. you're not um, uh, asking should, a question. What should I do? Stop the share, Cheryl? Stop share, yeah. Stop the share. <laughs> um, so I don't, if other people have uh, questions for Kishan or, or other observations. Yeah. 
It was definitely a labor of love. Oh, okay, yes. Andrew Auerbach has mentioned, yeah, Connecticut is the bike lanes. That's right. That'd be great. I know Andrew's a big cyclist, as am I. Christian? Just to, just to clarify, and so we fully understand it, are, are cars allowed in the lane? And uh, if if not, uh, how did you get cars out of a out of a main lane like that? I'm 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 in Arlington, and we'd love to do that on Lee Highway. And if if they are allowed in the lane, how do you uh, get the buses moving? The uh, the the. the yeah, the, 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 getting the buses moving was the big priority, and um, no. Uh, tip, generally speaking, uh, s uh, single cars are not allowed, no matter. But I, I believe that um, I believe that pickups uh, and drop-offs are allowed. Um, and turns, right? And turns. And turns and the, the, then the, your next question may very well be uh, how is it enforced and that is actually at every step as you all know on, on transit whenever whenever you, uh, you you move forward the question is how are you enforcing how are you going to make sure it works uh, uh, the, what I would like to see uh, is um, uh, enforcement cameras on the backs of buses. And this has succeeded in other cities. I'm not sure that's what they're doing. I think there will, will be cameras though, along the, maybe not on buses, but along 16th street. I think there will be cameras. They're looking, both, they're piloting right now, both cameras on stationary cameras, the DC is, is managing. And then I do believe that Metro is actually starting to do on camera buses. Um, I see actually two, two hands raised and I want to recognize them first um, Alex Lopez and then Ali Davis. A Alex, did you have a question? Yes, thank you. Um, and congratulations, Keyshawn, on your award. And we're very excited for the 16th Street bike, bike lane. Um, I wanted to recognize that the um, Vision Zero Act that was passed last, last year would require, if fully funded, um, which the mayor and the council have an opportunity to fund it in this coming fiscal year, the Vision Zero Act would require DDOT whenever they're making major road reconstruction or repairs to install uh, protected or not protected transit lane, uh, bus priority lanes, bus lanes um, on seg road segments that are included within the transport, the transit priority network of the Move DC plan. Um, and so I see, I see the Move DC and the Vision Zero Act as the tools that I have as an ANC commissioner and other advocates that want to see more bus lanes. This is the biggest thing that I think we should be focused on in order to make sure that DDOT is consistently building out its transit priority networks and bus only lanes. And that um, for the next 16th street style bus lane, we don't have to wait um, as many years. <laughs> we don't have to be as patient as, as you were. Um, but thank you for, for kind of setting the, the initial route and, and we're hope, I'm hoping that with the, um, the funding of the Vision Zero Act, we'll be able to do more and more quickly. Yes, it's very important. Thanks, Alex. And uh, um, let me know how I can help. Allie? Hey, Cheryl and Kishan, congratulations. This is definitely something we've, we've, been, we've been tracking and we wanted to make sure we were building the bus lanes before um, we're, we were able to award. So. Um, but I did want to clarify, so the building 16th Street, unlike H&I, which was literally going and painting over the weekend and putting down red paint, right. um, 16th Street is 12 to 18 months for construction because there is actually like road construction that has to happen, which I think we all know is never fast. Um, so that's, so it, it did start the beginning of this year. So it's a good, so, so adding 12 to 18 months that that gets us to the, about a year from now. Um, and there is, if, if you go to move, if you Google move dot move DC, there's a, they're re, they're updating move DC because the last version was 2014. There is, um, to, to whomever was asking about Connecticut Avenue, there's a map that actually highlights the um, bus priority corridors that are kind of being considered. So I don't know where Connecticut Avenue is in there, but I know Columbia Road is on there. So that's a, that's a positive. Um, and for people from, from across the city, you can see corridor, other corridors that are on there. So it's, I think it's movedc.com, but I Google it to, mm -hmm. to make sure. Thanks, Ellie. Uh, 
Wait, actually, I want to grab um, John has his hand raised. <laughs> John. Hi, John. Um, hi. Uh, well, uh, the enforcement issue was something that uh, reminded me of an article that was in the Washington Post uh, maybe a year ago that um, DC doesn't have a, a, a way to enforce um, the camera tickets for Maryland drivers. And I would imagine that's mostly what's on 16th Street. Um, and it, it said that the you know Maryland drivers owe DC many, many millions of dollars, but um, the the Maryland the state of Maryland will not enforce the uh, the ticket. So um, I, I just wonder, you know, people the people from Maryland can drive with impunity uh, in the bus lanes on 16th Street. There is a reciprocity issue related to automated um, enforcement. That's true. Um, and that's something to, to look look at. Uh, there is reciprocity for other kinds of um, infractions, but not uh, for automated enforcement. Oh, that's, that's a good point. Thanks for raising that. that, that Let me just add one thing. To, this is something I've thought about on mm -hmm. that, is that the... Um, I would assume that the city could, like, if someone has many, many tickets, the city could could still put one, you know, immobilize the vehicle and then collect that way. Yeah, if they could find the car. Mm -hmm. Janine, I see you have your hand up. Well, definitely, they're definitely going to have a lot of signage for sure, um, because these are rush hour uh, bus lanes, so. Lots of signage at rush hour. And, uh, <clears throat> hopefully a lot of buses to keep the cars out. <laughs> Janine? Oh, you know, you're on mute. Uh-oh, we can't hear you. There you go. This is my first time at this group and uh, I've been active with WIN and, and, uh, and for affordable housing, just as a background. But I, I was totally flummoxed by what's been going on at Union Station. And I just want to raise it as an issue. Uh, several years ago, I don't know how many millions of dollars they put in to that area. And when it was done, you couldn't tell anything had been done. They may have repaved some roads, but it was just the regular mess it had been always. And then I started looking at the paper and, the, and these plans for Union Station. And they had pictures. I, I can't tell you how long I looked at those pictures and I can't figure it out. I do not know what they are doing down there. So I just, I really think uh, somebody needs to get their act together to make sure we understand. And then I'm hearing that they're not, they don't really want as many buses down there. Well, how in the world are people going to get to the train, you know, if you're not on Metro? So uh, there's a, I just, just feel like there's a lot of stuff going on and I cannot figure it out. And, and if we're going to be involved down there, we'd, we'd better get our act together as to what it is they are doing because of the same thing that the last time it didn't help. Well, so there's sort of uh, long-term major plans for, for Union Station. And, um, you know, it's actually a great topic for another kind of educational event because there's so much to it. Yeah. Um, it it's, well, quite I, a, it's quite a I grand just, Yeah, I just plan. wanted to flag it. I just see it as a real problem. I don't know who's doing the thinking, but uh, it's sure not clear to me. I, I go down there all the time because I go to Kaiser. Mm -hmm. So do we have, oh, uh, Jeff, you had a question? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Cheryl. Um, Kishin, I, I mainly wanted to say what an incredible slog and a big heartfelt thank you. I mean, that is just a tale of super perseverance and uh, and, you know, you should hear from one of the people who will personally benefit from that because you won't hear from 
you know, the hundreds and thousands who will on a daily basis. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And uh, I put something in the chat that I, I just wanted to reemphasize. Uh, the, you know, it's not about buses, it's about riders, it's about people at the end of the day. It is, the community work can be most effective if you ground it and center it on the people affected, the riders. Uh, and, you know, a, a, a statistic we would use is, in addition to the pictures of people and kids uh, at bus stops uh, freezing, waiting for buses, we would also tell, uh, tell the mayor that, remind them that unreliable buses are actually the number one reason that DC kids drop out of school. Uh, they, would, uh, they, they would miss one bus and then they would just give up because they knew that they would be late and they would be penalized for it. And uh, uh, these are many impacts like this. These little, um, seemingly little things like this can have huge impacts. And um, we wanna do this not just on 16th Street. So. Uh, we got to keep pushing forward. Thank you very much, Jeff. And thanks, Cheryl. Um, yeah, we, I'm, I think I met you in uh, in probably 2014. I think David Alpert introduced us. Yeah, you know, we actually did more than one petition um, drive on the 16th Street bus lane, and the second time around. You know, we we found you going up and down the corridor, um, doing ANSI resolutions, which are incredibly helpful because we had to get three. We really needed the buy-in from three different council members: Ward Four, Ward One, and Ward Two. And um, and and so we knew that four and two were going to be more challenging, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, we always kind of had we had the support, um, some level of support. Um, first, with Jim Graham, and then from Brian Nadeau. Your your legislative and and, and chief executive elections; uh, those are prime opportunities as well for uh, advocacy. The year and a year and a half beforehand, uh, you know, uh, starting to get the candidates uh, on the record, it's an opportunity. They have to come before you. They're up for re-election or election, and. Um, yeah, getting the council member candidates and the chief executive or um, mayor um, on the record, it's important and it's uh, it's newsworthy, it's press worthy, the press uh, gets, gets interested, gets more interested and then uh, you can hold them to it. <laughs> That's what we did. Yeah. And during sort of this very long period that we we advocated for the 16th street bus lane you know the world really changed for us in terms of how uh what transportation engineers were were doing and thinking about it it used to be oh we got to move cars and we got to worry about traffic congestion and you know pushing cars into neighborhood streets so we really you know i had early discussions with the deputy director of ddot saying oh there's a lot of all this modeling and evaluation we have to do before we could really talk about prioritizing buses on 16th street um and so we i mean they we had to go through i mean we had to do draft environmental impact or environmental impact statement um but in this period of time there's been tremendous um progress made with a national NACTO, National Association of Trans City Transportation officials, and, and a lot of things that have emerged during this period that have really um, reset the, the um, I mean, we haven't arrived, but there's been a, a there's been a, a clear culture change moving through transportation agencies. And, um, and I'm excited about the next phase with um, the federal government uh, demonstrating a lot of interest in, in rethinking all the old ways that, that have they've been approaching you know traffic congestion and you know single occupancy vehicles as being just just a little history uh, for years the 16th street the s2s were the only line that made money uh, in the system is that right and they actually changed populations three times because it was so long so it's just, you know, it really was quite a lot. Yes. Yeah, pretty diverse neighborhoods. 
to pass through. And I just put in the chat, the statistic we would often use uh, was that on this equity grounds, over 50% of the people on 16th Street during rush hour were in buses. And uh, all we're asking for is yeah. out, of three lane, bus, uh, out of three lanes, give them that one lane for those 50% of the people, tens of thousands of people. It'll help. It's going to help a lot. Of they work. used to show up at least three at a time because they get all jammed up, and yeah. there'd be three buses. Incredible. Yeah, a picture speaks a thousand words. Uh, when I took that photograph of the buses bunched up, that was my own little phone uh, out of my window. Uh, yeah. And I posted that. It got it got more traction than any picture I've ever had. Oh yeah. yeah. So we're going to go back in in a minute, back into um, the final little couple minute uh, wrap up. And um, I want to thank Kishan for all his terrific work and for sharing his, uh, his story. And thank you everybody for joining us. And um, we're going to keep on uh, keep on winning it for buses. We we really um, we uh, we've really made some important movement. We have a long way to go, but we've made some important. Hopefully, progress. hopefully this progress is a sign of momentum. We saw it work on H and I Street, now 16th. Now we can do more. Right. Thank you, everybody. Well, good here. to see everybody. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna have a quick wrap up in the uh, in the in the uh, main main room. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back into the main room. Okay. <laughs>